And Ed. Hi, I'm Jeff MacArthur. And we are so excited to be back for our second month. We had such great feedback after the first month that, uh, of course, we've come back with an even bigger and better show. Yeah, we're here on the floor of DX3 in Toronto, which is super fun. Great conference we were at today. And uh, we've got some amazing stuff coming up today. We really do. Um, I just want to say for people who are just joining right now that Laura is in the comments. As always, she does such a great job of answering your questions. I'm also going to make sure I share this on my page so my friends can enjoy it. And uh, people can leave their comments. Laura will be a answering during the show and we'll all answer after the show. Absolutely. And we've got Marty from Splice who's going to be on as our central interview with Amber. So you'll get a chance to ask him questions. We're also going to talk about Vero, the social media network with some potentially uh, mm, questionable beginnings. We're also going to... Uh, we have a giveaway. So, a giveaway? Uh, we should mention that as well. So we have a giveaway courtesy of T-Mobile. We're going to dive into the details of that giveaway in a little bit. We don't want to give it all away right now, but you will have a chance to win one of those smartphone cases thanks to T-Mobile. We'll have all the details at the end of the show, so that is a good one as well. And we have a winner from last month, the Pixel Book. Thank you so much, Google, for uh, donating that to us. We've got a Pixel Book winner that... Uh... Yeah, he's pretty excited. His name is Paul. He was very excited to win this, as I'm sure you can imagine. This is not a small prize. No. Uh, a fantastic laptop from Google, and uh, Paul will have that any day now, and he has promised us a short video review to give us a sense of what he thinks of the Pixel Book, and I know it's going to be all good things, of course. I put my name in three times for that and didn't win, so it's a little frustrating, but clearly, seriously. Clearly, you didn't read the rules and regulations. I uh, wanted to say once again, so uh, please tune in. Let us know where you're watching from. I know there are people who are watching all across the country, around the world, so we love to see where you're watching from. And uh, like we mentioned, uh, Laura is in the comments, and she will be managing that for all of us. And I uh, wanted to start out with uh, an interactive poll that we did, a Batman poll. And this was a fun one that we hosted on Twitter. This was really Jeff's idea. Let's, not, let's be honest here. I'm going to have to carry some serious geek weight here. So who is the best Batman seemed to be an obvious question. And I was unsurprised at the results. What did you think? Amber, Christian Bale going to come up on top? Yeah. Christian Bale came up on top at 44%. Then we have uh, Michael Keaton. Who uh, Marty from Splice is actually uh, uh, says that's his favorite by far. I agree with Marty. So he and I are going to get along real great during the uh, live interview. <laughs> uh, we uh, have the same choice of Batman characters. So uh, that's a good one. Uh, people should let us know in the comments who they think. Absolutely. And I'm a, I like Christian Bale the best for sure. But I am also a bit of a fan of Ben Affleck as grumpy old Superman. Like, what? I'm not sure he'd be the right young Superman, but boy, as just Superman who's had enough of this crap, he's not too bad. Super loser. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, okay. <laughs> okay, I just want to say uh, we have people watching from Hamilton. Uh, we have Fernando watching from Dallas. Tim Burroughs is watching uh, probably from Orlando. Uh, people watching from Nova Scotia, that's Paul. Uh, so thanks again for your comments. Uh, keep it coming. We're all following along. This is a very interactive show. Yeah, and so between each episode and each month in the early month, we'll have the live episode. And we want you guys to be here so we can speak with you about uh, what you're interested in, get your feedback on stuff. But there's lots going on between episodes. So as I said last time, we post our uh, the canned episodes, the pre-recorded pre recorded segments rather on Twitter and Instagram. We've also got a lot of great content and we thought we would cover some of that content. So the Batman poll is one, but there's also an awesome uh, uh, Deadpool game news story that we had uh, that that I think we really have to put up even just for that picture of Deadpool as Bob Ross. <laughs> this is one of these situations when you're doing a live show where uh, the picture is worth a thousand words. This should be our screenshot for this episode because uh, you, you can't go wrong with this. Uh, Jeff, tell us a little bit about uh, the history behind how awesome this <laughs> well, is. Well, so Deadpool, I think Deadpool 2 is still called the unnamed Deadpool movie or something like that on IMDb. They've been doing all sorts of interesting stuff online with the Ryan Reynolds doing a, a perfect job of inhabiting the, the quirky, strange, uh, unlike any other superhero that Deadpool is. So there's a Cards Against Humanity style game released for Deadpool, and that is basically what the, the whole thing was about, but mostly just an excuse to show you this picture, because if you haven't seen that video of 
of him painting that, you really need to go watch that after you finish this video, of course. Yeah, this seems like something you were doing late at night in your basement. But anyway, I uh, <laughs> just wanted to say uh, just one comment here from Dellen who says, uh, Christian Bale, a really good acting. Uh, apparently, uh, that's the person uh, uh, who you choose as far as the Batman, uh, perfect Batman character. And uh, a few other people are commenting as well. And we have verified that Tim Burroughs is in fact in Orlando. He says it's cool there. He obviously forgets where we're from, which reminds me, Jeff, as you're looking through the comments, yes. I want uh, to show you this t-shirt. It's uh, Queen of the North. And I was super excited uh, to get this shirt uh, from one of the uh, people here at uh, DX3. Uh, pretty cool t-shirt. I'll tell you a bit about the history behind this company a little bit later on and uh, uh, thank them very much for the t-shirt. Does, this does not mean I'm the ice queen. No. Well, I might leave that alone. Our next story though, uh, <laughs> if you guys haven't caught this online, we can't show it to you because I think YouTube would haul us down for copyright violation. But somebody has beautifully remixed the new Han Solo movie trailer to the Beastie Boys Sabotage. This is pretty good. If you are a Beastie Boys fan, you will absolutely love this and uh, you will be uh, thrilled to share this with your friends. This is one of those things that's very shareable on social media that people should check out and share on Facebook or Twitter or, or beyond. It's so well done too. I, I think it's actually better than the original trailer, frankly. So uh, you can find that on YouTube and Lara's going to be posting links for this sort of stuff online. Um, we, uh, in the comments rather, uh, another story was a Black Panther related one. Yeah, so uh, this is a good one. Uh, we had gone onto Twitter and uh, asked this, uh, or, or left this comment and question about uh, Black Panther, and uh, this is a good one. Um, again, uh, this really shows our geeky side. This is what Command N is all about. Uh, this is a place where you can come and uh, get geeky with us. And so the point of the whole thing is, if vibranium if its property is that it absorbs all vibrations and stuff, how do you bounce that against a wall, off a wall? If you threw that against the wall, it should just hit the wall and drop to the ground. All, all, all good questions. All These good are questions. important questions, I think. Does any, is there anyone else out here with me? Because, boy, I, I hear stuff like that, and I just think, let's, let's, let's do some of the legwork behind these concepts, guys. You have way too much time on your hands. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wanted to mention uh, one time again, thank you to T-Mobile for the giveaway. Uh, all the details coming a little bit later on. I uh, also wanted to encourage people to share this with their friends and family. It would be amazing to have you share this with your community out there on Facebook. And uh, we would be happy to turn them into Command N fans really, really quickly. I don't think it will take too long. And it would be awesome to have them join us uh, in the comments on the show. So share this right now. Let us know if you've shared it. And uh, thank you so much. So we'll step a little bit away from superhero land to get back into some tech. And Amber, you've got the new Samsung S9 Plus, which looks totally amazing. It actually does look amazing, but it also seems amazing. It, it's because you like the lilac purple, don't you? I am big uh, on purple. I'm a big Prince fan. I'll show you that a little bit later, but you probably saw the launch for the uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. Uh, this was just recently launched. A lot of people are very excited about this. Uh, starting price point of US $959, so pretty incredible to uh, see this device. I actually have the lilac purple version. There's also a titanium steel, so you can see it's an absolutely gorgeous phone. Excuse my fingerprints, but I've been testing <laughs> it out, and Brandon has been playing with it as well using the camera. Uh, should mention a couple of things ab about the camera. Uh, it's amazing in low light. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, I was able to see in the briefing that I had with Samsung. Uh, just absolutely incredible in low light. Uh, I think Samsung has always had really strong cameras anyway. Oh yeah, and the, the features that they're building into this, there's the the animation emoji kind of thing. Yeah, the There's... AR uh, emoji, which is really cool, or the, the, the emoji that you can make of your face. So that's kind of fun, so you can share those with your friends. But I think in terms of something extremely impressive, it's a super slow motion. And uh, this is a video that was shot by Mark at Samsung that he shared with me yesterday at his cottage. Check this out. This is so cool. So that is shot live with the Samsung S9 Plus. There you can see it in regular speed and the bird's gonna take off and it will be pretty amazing the quality and clarity so, that you get from this. It's just phenomenal to watch this. So like I said, this is not a video produced by Samsung. It was Mark who does work at Samsung, but it was shot at his cottage this weekend. And you'll see what he did was he isolated the frame. So he isolated that part that he wanted in that super slow motion. 
I will say that uh, this kind of makes that this device speak for itself as far as the camera feature. So this, if you love taking pictures, shooting video, you want a really strong device, uh, this is definitely one of the top contenders. It's a good Yeah, one so there. check it out. We'll put a review up on ambermac.com, I'm sure, in the near future. Uh, other news, Amber, you invited me to Vero Social. You didn't tell me that it was run by a madman. <laughs> I know. I apologize in advance for this, but we do have to talk about it because it has been in the headlines lately. And I like it. I just, off the top, I got to say, madmen or not, boy, if you're going to make a new social media network, this, this appeals to me. Yeah, so um, if anyone in the comments has tried it out, please do let us know what you think of it. Uh, we do recognize that there are questionable routes to this particular social networking app. We're not uh, naive about that. Uh, I do want to say from a purely design perspective, as far as the social networking features, there's a few we want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, they're absolutely, uh, I think, well done in many ways. Smarter sharing is a big one. Yeah, they've got, they've broken sharing down into a bunch of different areas where you've got uh, links and, and, and images and videos and stuff like you'd normally have, but you also have books and movies and all of these different things. You've got, you can connect with friends in different ways. This reminds me a little bit of, of Google Plus, RIP. Uh, and they've got smarter searching based on all of these different categories. So if somebody posts something in one of these categories and you're following them, all you got to do is, is go here to see uh, their movie or TV recommendations or book recommendations you've gotten or what, whatnot. Yeah, uh, the, the Smarter Feed, uh, like you mentioned, um, I think what's cool is in, it isn't just about photos. You can share things in here such as your favorite music, your uh, favorite books. I thought that was another yeah, nice feature. Yeah, and no algorithmic feed. It's, it's reverse chronological order. It has uh, no ads in it. Um, now, you're supposed to pay for uh, Eventually, they're going to get a level where they're, you're going to be paying a subscription for this. Uh, they've extended that a little bit because of the amazing response they've had. And... There, there are some, a couple things to worry about. They, they need to ratchet down their privacy uh, uh, sort of legalese Their there. privacy policy is a little bit uh, disturbing to a lot of people, so that's a big one. And to cancel your account is also a little Very muddy. Difficult. So, So I'd prefer us to give them that feedback and then make a viable alternative to Facebook and other things because it's a cool idea. I like it better than most of these things that have popped up that we've just they, been able to They try. did a great job of it. So uh, again, really slick design. It looks great. Uh, very user friendly. They had a few crashes in the early days, but overall I think it's an app that uh, people should try out. Uh, be aware of where it's coming from. Uh, you can look that up online. I want to say uh, thank you to Paul who has just shared this episode of Command N. We really appreciate it and uh, let us know in the comments what you're thinking of the show so far. We want to hear from you. Tim Burrows, you're in Orlando. It must be beautiful. Let us know what you think and lots of other people who are saying hello i love how jeff gives you the side wave that was a runner's wave if you run that's what runners do by yo, the way <laughs> yo. <laughs> yo um okay so uh before we get into a really cool travel gadget uh wanted to talk a bit about hq trivia yeah so i don't know if any of you guys have gotten to try this but it, this is really cool a couple of the creators of vine have made this trivia app where it's three multiple choice questions 12 questions twice a day at a set period of time live and the winners split the actual uh, uh, the, the prize which was up at at fifty thousand dollars just recently uh, pretty amazing right it's really uh, cool they also just raised 15 million dollars so very impressive i know people are hooked on this they're taking off uh during the work day to play this or in the evening and i absolutely love it this kind of speaks volumes about the future of live and i think this, yeah. this goes to show us that people still want live events live streams like Command N. That's why we're here doing this. And many other shows. Uh, so very cool. Chris says he just uh, got here but missed the first half, or half of the show. Um, so uh, don't worry, you can watch it back afterwards. Uh, Fernan Fernando has a question we should answer. Is it safe to join Vero? And uh, that's based on what we just talked about. Uh, I think that you need to do your own homework as far as if you, you're comfortable joining Vero, just like many other social networks. Do we really know what they're doing with our data? So read up on it if you feel comfortable. Uh, maybe create a separate email address and some fake data, sign in, try it out. Um, it's worth looking at, I think, as a, a better designed, uh, possibly uh, Instagram. It may not be Vero that ends up winning out in the end, yep. uh, but I do think it makes us think differently about social sharing. Yeah, and let's that's give them the cool. feedback to make a better 
yes. type of platform. And, and you know, uh, Tim says, I like the design and segmentation of uh, Vero. Uh, the levels of privacy are simplistic and straightforward. That's pretty impressive coming from him. He is former law enforcement, so uh, he knows what he's talking about as far as <laughs> privacy and security. Um, also wanted to mention before we get to Lara's segment, uh, one more time, thanks to T-Mobile for this giveaway. You have to listen to the end of the show before we give you all the details around the giveaway. I know, it's, it's a good one though. These are beautiful cases that are perfect for springtime. T-Mobile has lots of great cases that will and give your phone a nice upgrade for spring. And they're iPhone 7, 8 cases. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. So, yeah. uh, so we'll give you some details a little bit later on. But first, uh, let's take a look because I know travel is on people's minds at this amazing travel charger that Laura was able to find. I recently started planning for some big trips in 2018, including a family one, and I suddenly realized we are going to have a lot of devices to charge. The worst time to run out of juice is definitely when you're exploring an interesting new place and want to take pictures or look up directions or just find a great place to eat. I took a look around at universal adapters that could handle more than one or two devices at a time since that means less to pack and I find that outlets sometimes aren't as plentiful overseas, especially in airports. I decided to try out the Twist Plus World Charging Station from One Adapter. The Twist Plus is lightweight and compact, which is essential in a travel adapter. It's also really easy to use and boasts compatibility in over 150 countries. The design appealed to me because it is a, has a simple mechanism to choose from various plug configurations depending on what country you're in, plus there are four USB ports to allow for multiple multiple devices to charge at once. Finally, for anyone traveling with a MacBook, this is a great choice as it can accommodate the standard Apple power brick, which is super convenient. If you don't travel with a MacBook, there's also a USB-only version on the market called the Twist, and both the Twist and the Twist Plus retail for around $45 to $50. My phone is absolutely exploding. A lot of people are excited about the show tonight. Thanks for tuning in. But we are especially excited about Marty being here. You're the CEO of Splice. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And you've come to Toronto from Rochester. We That's appreciate right. it. It's not too, too far. But first of all, what is Splice all about? So I like to say we pay people to play video games for a living, as crazy as that sounds. So uh, we're a competitive gaming team, or otherwise known as eSports. Um, and so we have teams in different games who play in large tournaments around the world. Uh, we have championships across five different games. Some of those are Halo, Call of Duty, uh, games you traditionally would have played when you're younger and are still hanging around today. Um, and even some new ones were in things like uh, Rocket League uh, is a, one of the newest ones, which is literally soccer with cars, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we play in front of large stadiums with 20,000 people and millions of people watching online. And it's a whole new world of entertainment and sports. So cool. And full disclosure, uh, Jeff and I have done some work with you. And we've been so excited learning about this space because it's just fascinating to see the growth. Also, I have some uh, kids in my neighborhood who want to convince their parents that they can play video games for a living. And unfortunately, you've ruined my answer for all the other <laughs> parents because now I have to say it is actually possible have you yeah. heard of this amazing company yeah so it's kind of a, you have kids too I mean it's kind of an interesting world that we live in to now where where gaming has become so important to people yeah I mean the difference is uh, I'm 38 years old I certainly growing up with gaming it was a bit of a more weird thing to do now everyone's a gamer every kid is a gamer and so it's part of the culture it's no different than traditional sports really were for our generation this generation gaming is their traditional sports and it's taking up market share from where the NFL the NBA those folks were before. It is the future of sports and entertainment. It is pretty impressive. Uh, we have some comments here. Elizabeth says, hire me and my hubby. She's really excited. She says, my husband <laughs> is, is huge on Rocket League. Uh, so a lot of people excited about this. We put a link to Splice into uh, the comments area for people to check it out. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the growth in this area? Because I think what we're seeing right now is that for you, I mean, you're immersed in this world. Yeah. Uh, for many of the people who are watching right now, they've heard of this world, uh, but they don't realize how big it is. Like some of these tournaments are absolutely massive. Yeah. So we're we're seeing prize pools in the millions of dollars on a regular basis at this point. Last year's biggest was $26 million, which is larger than like tennis and golf tournaments. Uh, the attendance that I mentioned, 20,000 people will be in a stadium to watch an event between two teams, and that's getting broadcast to 10, 15, 20 million people. It's online is why people aren't getting it, because it isn't through traditional television. You're not watching it. If you are watching it on TV, it's a very small portion of the audience. And I think the real growth is coming around, around engagement. We talk social a lot, obviously, here, you know, and uh, so do we in the esports space. And social is a big part of what makes it so powerful. When you're on something like Twitch, where you consume this, it isn't just watching. You're part of the experience. You're in chat. You're engaging while you're watching. It's pretty 
amazing. Um, and we kind of put Marty on the spot because we said, hey, would you be willing to do a giveaway for the show? And uh, you are going to do that for people who are entering into the giveaway. So thank you for stepping up. Uh, just tell us what type of cool stuff you can include in that package. So we're going to do a splice swag pack. It's going to come with a hat and a t-shirt. And if you look this cool walking down the street, <laughs> you're going to have heavy nerd cred. So It is pretty heavy nerd cred. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your plans to grow over the next couple of years. Because again, I think there's lots of people who are watching. And please let us know in the comments what you think of Splice and uh, the excitement about this space. But there are people watching right now who are, are going to watch you grow. I mean, I joked earlier saying that uh, you're like the, the Steve Jobs of uh, eSports. So yeah. I, I think that that's I kind of so. true, right? <laughs> so how do you, what are the plans for the next few years? Yeah, I mean, we're really, like, we got really good at winning and not trying to pat myself on the back because I don't even pick the teams. Mm -hmm. I have people who do that. We win lots of championships. We got that part down. I think the growth is really around regional and getting face to face with fans. Esports is very, very digital, but there's an awesome audience out there that wants to interact in person, that wants to engage one on one. So we're going to be doing a lot more regional stuff, especially in the Northeast across the Great Lakes area, uh, Ontario, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, out in the New England area. We're not confined to a stadium like traditional sports, so we can be a bit more broad like that. And we think a big part of that is activations in person. Same thing in Europe, because Europe's a big part of our audience as well. We do have have a couple teams out there that are very, very uh, good uh, in Call of Duty and League of Legends. So finding that audience out there, um, I think the key is building an online audience that has really strong engagement and really strong po uh, power belonging to the brand while giving them opportunities to engage in person because that's what we're looking for, right? That power of the in-person engagement. Absolutely. I just want to encourage people to leave a comment for Marty. If you have any comments or questions, we'll rope him into uh, answering <laughs> those. Uh, maybe not right now during the show, but after I'm the show. I'm super active on Twitter, so. Yeah, you're right. You should yeah. let people know where they can find you on Twitter. Uh, laser chicken with three Zs on the end and laser spelled with a Z. I know that's not the correct way, but it is, so. Uh, we have a couple of comments. Uh, Elizabeth says, very heavy nerd cred about the t-shirt, so thank you for that. Um, we also have a comment from Oda who says, best tees ever, by the way. Oda, can, Oda, can number can one confer, fan. Number one fan, <laughs> so that's kind of great. Uh, so just for people who want to uh, watch more of what you do, they can follow you on Twitter. Yep. Uh, where can they find Splice just to keep up to date on everything? So definitely going to Twitter is one of our main social platforms. We do a lot of Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, our website's going to have all of our matches, new content, um, giveaways, you buy our merchandise there. Um, and you're, if you're looking to see what we're in, what it's all about, that's kind of a repository for a lot of stuff, video, social, everything. Um, we're in the day and age where there isn't one place, right? It's a lot of different platforms, which is cool. You can just consume through Facebook. You can just consume through the website. It's kind of what you, what works best for you. Very so. cool. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming up and joining us live. We so yeah. appreciate it. And to uh, all your fans who you brought to uh, watch Command N. And uh, we will be in touch, of course. And uh, thanks again for the giveaway. We will let you know about the giveaway. We'll have some rules and regulations that we will write up on that uh, so you know. Um, and again, uh, it would be cool if, when they can be walking down the street and looking as cool as you. You, hey, dude. remember when nerd cred was a bad thing to say? <laughs> Nowadays, you got basketball players trying to dress like nerds. So <laughs> it's all we're good. in. <laughs> uh, Paul Wright says Splice sounds like a lot of fun. I just followed them on Twitter, uh, so uh, getting a couple followers here as all, well. All I gotta say is, if you see some of the pictures of our office, you'll understand it's a fun place to work. So yes, I, I, I will attest. <laughs> we to post that. a lot of those on Twitter. So it absolutely is. So thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks and, for having me. Uh, speaking of cool stuff, now we're gonna check out a waterproof speaker from Jeff. I've been looking for a rugged little wireless speaker that I don't have to worry about getting wet or giving to the kids to use, and I found a neat solution in the Polk Boom Swimmer Junior Bluetooth speaker. This speaker has an IPX7 rating and so can be submerged in up to three feet of water for up to 30 minutes. And in fact, one of the use cases they highlight on the packaging is using it in the shower. It's also sealed from dirt, dust, and sand, making it a perfect little speaker for the beach. The shockproof rubberized exterior makes the Swimmer Junior durable enough to survive short falls and the wear and tear that might damage other speakers. There's also a built-in microphone, so you can take calls with it, and there are onboard controls for volume, skip forward, skip backward, and call answering. So you don't have to resort to your phone or other device to do any of those things. All of this is great, but probably the most unique thing about the speaker is this crazy little flexible tail that it has. And this allows you to use it as a foot to position it on a table, but also to hang it off of anything. And in fact, you can push it through this little hole in the speaker and twist the end so that you can lock it onto your bike's handlebars, your shower head, or anything else that it fits around. The lithium battery charges in about two hours, and that'll give you six to eight hours of playback at full volume. Note that you want to be sure to fully push in the little rubber cover that covers the micro USB charging port when you're not using it so you don't compromise its water resistance. 
The Polk Boom Swimmer Junior comes in sport blue, black, and gray mint. It's got a one-year warranty, and you can find it anywhere from $40 to $60, so it might be worth shopping around to get the best deal. Very cool. Uh, I have yeah. to say, this is great, especially if you have kids, you're going to the beach. But I have to ask you, so you have one of these and you didn't yeah. give it to me? No, I figured uh, I wanted to test it out pretty thoroughly because I know your household uses things, <laughs> let's say, with reckless abandon. <laughs> if you want to stress test your equipment, That's Amber's home true. is the place to send it. It absolutely <laughs> is the place to send it. Uh, so we're introducing a, a new segment on the show. Uh, before we get to that, I uh, just want to encourage people uh, to let us know in the comments uh, what was your favorite segment or pick so far. Do you have any questions for Marty? Uh, please feel free to uh, share the video. We would absolutely love that. And uh, we would encourage you to share with all your friends and family. And uh, we are going to get into a new segment that we're calling Odds and Ends. And this is a fun one. Laura is still in the comments. She's doing an awesome job of pasting in all of the links and sending us as many comments as possible. So we've got comments from Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah, Neil Vibert, uh, need this for the canoe. It'd be perfect for a canoe, for sure. Yeah, so uh, lots of feedback in here. People excited about some of the uh, gadgets we've talked about. So, Jeff, uh, I know speaking of things that you're excited about, I don't even know what to say about this. Isn't Alf old? So this is my new segment, Jeff's Geeky Show and Tell. This came to me in a dream one night. <laughs> Look at this. That is commitment. Like... Just, just so you know, that is, that is not an actual picture of me going to work. We were dressing up as geeks. I promise you. I promise you this. I didn't even realize when I was going through the deck that that was actually you. Oh, bring it back. Bring it back, Mark. We got to look at that. In the center there, that's when I was at Mainframe. That was our Mainframe uh, uh, programmers group uh, geek day. I, and we nailed it, I think, like, honestly. Oh. Nailed. <laughs> there could be a woman watching who is your wife who's saying right now, I made a giant mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to win her back you are. with Alf cards. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so we mentioned Alf last time because he's on Amazon Prime. So I thought I would bring in my Alf trading cards. Now, these have wonderful, not just great messages on the front, but they've got messages on the back. Um, so... Uh, Yes, yeah, so we have some uh, cards here that so, we're showing on screen, and you, have, you brought some with you. Yeah, so this one here, uh, for instance, says, uh, Dr. Janet Shumway was the first surgeon to successfully perform the delicate nostril transplant on a private investigator, on Melmac, obviously. When asked about operating on a nose, she said she was glad she didn't blow it. <laughs> well done, Alf, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Amber has an awesome one here. I mean, they get better and better. Okay, Edith J. Shumway, uh, the tallest uh, Melmacian. What is that? Melmacian. Melmacian. What is that? Mel He's from the planet Melmac, Amber. It got destroyed. <laughs> okay, the, the, the tallest Melmacian in history was best known for the way she could prune trees with her teeth without the use of a ladder. She was so tall that in 1857, mountain climber Horton Zick tried unsuccessfully to scale her. <laughs> this does happen. This does happen. <laughs> so these are super weird, and I thought they'd be fun uh, to get maybe a little away from the TV stuff and back into wait, tech. Wait, wait, who approved this segment? <laughs> uh, I was told I had full creative control. Uh, <laughs> this beautiful thing is Apple's delicious-looking uh, hockey puck mouse from... 1998. Uh, now, this thing looks great and it was really cool, connected as you might imagine to an iMac. Unfortunately, you put your hand on this and you can't tell which way is up. So, over time, you end up scrolling up and your mouse is going down. And it is probably Apple's greatest design failure. Um, so, at least we know Tim Cook hasn't bottomed it out completely yet because this thing. All you have to do is use it to realize it doesn't just work. <laughs> it's terrible. So a good thing for my, uh, my geek vault. And then one last thing is a picture from Pinterest. I'm a big Pinterest fan. Follow me at Jeff MacArthur okay, on Pinterest. Okay, slow down. What are, you, what are you pinning lately aside from this? Oh, my Cute gosh. I, I've got a Tolkien. Oh, yes. I'm completely destroying my awesomely curated Pinterest feed by making a board for the kids with cute animals on it. So now all my awesome geekery cool stuff that used to be there is peppered with fluffy buttons and baby goats. Fluffy 
not buttons. Okay, before you go <laughs> any further, uh, Dean says, I approve this segment. Uh, yes, Elizabeth Dean. says, channeling the geeks of the 1980s. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, please, okay, this is going to be a brother-sister battle. Do you want us to continue this segment, yes or no? Let us know in the comments, and we'll decide if you're on Team Jeff or Team Amber. <laughs> because you know what I'm thinking. I'm very serious. And uh, Jeff has actually one more thing. <laughs> I'm thinking this is this is this can evolve to my own spin-off show. This will be my my Joni loves Chachi. <laughs> if you wanted an '80s reference, uh, yes. And Mark, can you bring up our next picture? This is super cool. Off Pinterest slash Jeff MacArthur. Follow me. Uh, <laughs> the world divided into seven areas of equal population. So obviously seven continents. This goes to show how many people there are in different places. So. It looks like Africa is used, used as the baseline, but it really elegantly breaks out to include like Eastern China and the Koreas and Japan in one place, Southeast Asia as another, South Asia as another. I just thought it was a really cool picture. Um, this is one of the things I pinned to my boards there. There's history stuff, science stuff, geography stuff, all sorts of neat things. But I thought I'd share this one with you this week because I'm sure somebody looks at that and goes, ah, cool. Well, Aside from just me, I, I have to tell you that we got uh, in our Slack channel with Laura, we got a uh, comment that said, nope. Uh, that was in reference to uh, continuing the segment, but I don't feel like that was from someone watching. I think that was from Laura herself. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like that was from her. Uh, Dean says, I approve the segment, as I mentioned. Uh, also, this is a really interesting uh, com comment from Keith Shannon. I don't know if you've seen it there, Jeff. Uh, Keith Shannon finally found someone who's talking about ALF cards. Do you know how hard I've had to search all day to find this? Well, search no more, Keith. There's his, uh, uh, we can, we can change the world together. Wow. Okay. This wow. is, this is pretty awesome stuff. Also, ALF is one of the very few works of writing that was written by a uh, functioning heroin addict. I think aside from William S. Burroughs, it's pretty much just the creator of ALF. All the other heroin addicts don't actually write very successfully, but this guy, this guy did. This is going off the rails. <laughs> uh, okay, Chris, would you mind passing me that card I had on the table? I think Jeff threw it off in a moment of rage. Um, they were making my ALF cards look small. Look at this. Oh, wow. Look. I do want to I do want to uh, uh, talk about this for one second. Uh, I had mentioned where I got this t-shirt from, and it's from North Point. I promised a big shout out, so it says Queen of the North. You can sort of see it there. Uh, so North Point is this really cool new brand. Uh, you can check them out at northpointshop.ca, or they're at 2180 Young Street. Uh, you can go in. You can see how they use Kinetic Commerce uh, for sort of a new way of uh, retail with some really cool gear. So check them out. I promise that at the end. Um, we have a, a bunch of comments Just still a couple more. Yeah, now. a couple of questions, uh, comments we'll get to uh, now. Uh, Elizabeth Gibson, sounds great for kids too. That's relative to the speaker. Absolutely. It is so, so solid that, uh, that you don't have to worry about kids knocking it, dropping off things, getting it in the water. Uh, uh, Keith Shannon following up with an apology to Amber. I have to vote yes on this segment. Thank you for encouraging and, and me. Here's a legitimate question from Neil. Can you pair multiple poke booms together to make it into one speaker? Yes, you can. They actually have a different, uh, it's not the Swimmer Junior. It may just be the Swimmer Duo or something like that. And you can pair these poke speakers together to get stereo sound. So they've got a picture of two of them on the front of a golf cart and, and some that things like really uh, cool. people biking together with the stereo sound beside them. It's very romantic. I love that. So I do want to uh, mention our giveaway one more time. And this is where we get to share the uh, real details about the giveaway. So uh, a couple of minutes. So T-Mobile has been kind enough to uh, give us these three great phone cases. So you can give your phone an upgrade for spring. Kind of cool here. We have uh, the Apple iPhone uh, 7 or 8 Plus uh, Tech 21 Evo wallet. That's the pink one. Apple iPhone uh, 7 or 8 Plus uh, Casemate Waterfall in Rose Gold. Or the Apple iPhone X Under Armour Gray Green case. So that's uh, on the far right hand side. So very cool. Um, T-Mobile also has lots of other stuff for springtime that's uh, water resistant. They also have uh, headphones, portable speakers. You can get all of that at uh, T-Mobile.com. Thank you so much for uh, giving us these uh, smartphone cases. We promise we tell you how to enter for a chance to win. Laura is going to drop the link. She's posting the link. It's at ambermac.com slash command n dash giveaway or something like that. But we'll post it in the comments there. Uh, basically, U.S. and Canada, you got to fill out a form, let us know what your first choice of case would be because obviously if you don't have the right phone it, it doesn't make sense so fill that out uh, send it in and we'll be drawing for the winner later this month 
Yeah, let us know. We also have that splice giveaway uh, that uh, yep. Marty has been kind enough to give us. So um, if you're interested in that, maybe let us know in the comments as well. Um, and uh, we'll figure out the giveaway and the rules for that. Maybe we'll do a separate one. For yeah, that. so, so just keep, uh, hopefully you're following us here on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We've got original content going out on those throughout the month. And uh, you can follow us on all uh, of our social media. Yeah, so follow us anywhere. And uh, and we will uh, post some links to this sort of stuff. When it gets up on Amber's site, we'll put it there. We're also putting this on YouTube so that people who aren't on Facebook uh, can, can have a place to watch it. But uh, we really want to drive the Facebook Live thing because we love the comments coming in. We love talking to you guys. I love the affirmation that I'm not alone in this world as my sister would lead me to believe in <laughs> well, loving some of these terribly geeky things we're going to share with there, you. There are a lot of yeses on uh, Jeff's new segment, so we'll give it one more <laughs> month. We'll do it again in April and then see how you really feel. I feel like we need a Twitter poll for this. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say there's lots more comments coming in. Uh, one last time, uh, this is our second month back for the show, and uh, I do want to say that uh, this will only be a success if you can share it with your friends and family. Uh, really easy to do. You just click on that share button and share it with them so they can check out the show. We can build up the fan base. We want to keep this thing going strong and, and, and building on it and giving you more content everywhere. We're looking, we, this is great to do it on site here. We're going to be doing it in different locations in the future. So yeah, we'll be back a little bit after Easter with our next episode, but between now and then, there'll be lots going on on our social feeds. So follow us, share it, and thanks so much for tuning in. And thanks so much. And thanks to the uh, our friends at DX3 who've let us shoot here. If you come to Toronto in March, you have to come to this amazing marketing conference. It's awesome. Uh, big thank you to uh, Brandon, to Chris, to Mark, who are all behind the scenes here to uh, make us look good on this show. I apologize for Jeff's behavior and some of his, uh, his uh, stories, <laughs> uh, but uh, next month uh, we'll have some more good stuff. And as thanks, well. Laura, back in Halifax. So. Thanks, Share Laura. this with your friends and we'll, we'll see you guys in a month, if not sooner. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.